All right, hey, how's it going out there? It's AG Surfer back with a vid. Although I don't know if I should say back. I mean, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, it's, it's a vid and I'm back with a vid. <laughs> it's it's definitely been a while. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, these are books that I want to show off uh, that I got from last year. Um, since I didn't, I never shown a vid with these books. It was the East Coast Comic Con that was back um, in 2019 of May. And I believe it was on... I think it was a it was a Friday Saturday Sunday and it was like the 19th I think it was like the 19th through or sorry the 18th through the 20th or something of last year and then this past weekend the 15th 16th and 17th of this month would have been East Coast Comic Con again and there was a good chance I was heading back because it was such a excellent time last year that I was really looking forward to going again this year to meet the same guys you know if, po if possible and to uh, you know s do some more sightseeing around through New York and everything that I was uh, looking forward to this 2020 uh, comic-con <clears throat> but you know with current events obviously it didn't happen um, a lot of things didn't happen this year and probably aren't gonna happen the rest of the remainder of the year so I guess just got a plan for 2021 and, and see how it goes uh, well, let me go ahead and show off some of the books from last year. And it was, again, it was a fantastic time. I uh, went out there and met up with Amazing Murfinator. Um, two of those comics came out uh, as well. And we met up with a lot of the uh, NY Warriors guys. For me, it was the first time. And I believe it was the same for Cholula. Like, I believe Murph met a few of them, I'm sure, before. But, the you know, the main goal was to get like George Perez because it was his last you know Comic Con signing thing it was like his tour this farewell tour for George Perez on signing comic books at uh, Comic Cons so our goal was for to get you know as many books as we possibly could uh, signed by George Perez and then the other draw was like Joe Sinnott, Joe Gila, uh, Larry Hama to, uh, to name a few and we took the mantra from uh, the Avengers movie Myself and Murph. Uh, let's see if that comes in there. It's pretty much whatever it takes to get the uh, <laughs> to get those autographs, to get those signatures. So, and let me just show you the ones I got, and uh, and I'll discuss as as I go. So I've got a GI Joe uh, number one. I'll bring it in for be a little close. Uh, signed by Larry Hama. And he was extremely cool. It was probably the second time meeting him. And he was more, you know, he was, uh, the first time I think, the first time I met him, I, it was, a, you know, it was, it was at Rhode Island Con. And God, I don't know what, whatever that was like back in, I don't know if that was back in seven, 2017 or something. Um, but Rhode Island Con, and he wasn't feeling too well then, so he wasn't really spry. Uh, at this con, he was, he was awesome. He, I mean, he was, he looked good, looked healthy, which is important. And, uh, and he was signing stuff and he was, you know, offered to take pictures and stuff. And so that was fantastic. And it was great meeting him again. And then this time getting him, get him signed some books that, you know, I didn't have the first time, first go around for him. So yeah, I was really happy with this grade in Edo. So that's one of them. Let's see if I bring the other one. And, you know, see the, the issue with, there was a lot of issues with East Coast Comic Con back in 2019. They know the George Perez fiasco where the lines were crazy and there was not a lot of, you know, uh, direction or, you know, things were out of control and people were getting multiple signatures. People were jumping in line twice. And so it was, it was a tough, it was a tough gig. Definitely trying to get that George Perez, but Larry Hom obviously wasn't an issue and there was no CGC there. There was CBCS, but I wanted to do most of my stuff with CGC. So I had to go through uh, desert wind comics. They were there or as Murph likes to call them desert storm. So, excuse me, the other one I was really excited to, and these are books I, I picked up because I didn't have in my collection. I picked them up knowing that I'm going to this convention, you know, all the way across the states, had nobody in New York for me for the first time, and getting these autographs that I was like, let me go out of my way to f try to find these books at a great price to get Mr. Larry Hama to sign. Uh, so yeah, really, again, really happy with this one as well. Oh, there it is. It's toward the end of the day. I guess my daylight isn't so good. But yeah, Larry Hama, issue 21, you know, the silent issue, first appearance of Storm Shadow. Um, yeah, I mean, I grew up with these 
I was young enough that I kind of grew up with these action figures as well, these Hasbro figures and the cartoons that, and when I got into collecting comic books, um, G.I. Joe was one of them that would pull off the rack, but some days, you know, you go to your, I would go to my local comic book store and some of these were sold out so I wouldn't get them, right, and then back issues were tough too at the time. We didn't have, <laughs> we didn't have all the technology we did, we do now that I did when I was collecting, but um, yeah, I want to say when I got into collecting G.I. Joe's. 84 yeah it might have been 84 1984 when I was collect started collecting 84 80 th no actually yeah 85 actually so like this these issues are already out when I was collecting but I think my GI Joe's when I got in there was probably like the late 20s or the early 30s as far as the issues are concerned but again real nice Larry Helm a real nice guy it was a fantastic to meet him and talk with him a little bit and hear the stories and get those books autographed and Desert Wind, you know, it, it took took definitely quite some time to get these books back from CGC um, from them. But I'm just stoked with the grades and how they, at least they came back. You know, they arrived in great shape and nothing, no issues. This is a book I ran around to get um, some other guys there to sign. Uh, it's Peter Parker, The Spectacular Spider-Man number 90. And I got the uh, that nice turquoise pen. Al Milgram. Man, I hope this is coming. <laughs> it just doesn't look. Maybe I hold it back. Uh, Bob Sharon and Danny Fingeroff. I figured all those guys were there. That's a that's a three combo. Sig, go for it. And uh, again, really happy with the grade. This was a book that was in my collection since, well, probably eighty five, eighty four, and uh, and so for it to come back like that, that high grade. Obviously, I took pretty good care of my books after reading them and everything. I didn't didn't thrash them, so really stoked with that. And this just kind of ties in with the first black costume. You know, this is the first black costume in this title, and that's all. That's what this part of this book is. It's Spider-Man getting the black suit, you know, for the first time, and it happens in the in the Peter Parker Spectacular series. And like I said, one of the big draws for me was. Uh, Having the opportunity to meet Mr. Joe Sinnott again for you know for the second time, because yeah, and I think that was it for him as well as far as conventions go. He's he was done after East Coast Comic Con. He may have done one or two more, but I don't recall that he did. So this book was a surprise, but again, not but it wasn't a disappointment by any not for me by any means. Um, the color was probably more of a slight disappointment, <laughs> and even with this video, I don't know how it's coming out. Ugh. Yeah, that light doesn't help. This is what happens when I don't make videos for so long. I just kind of got to learn how to do it again. But you can kind of see the word, you know, Joe, and then Senate, and it just disappears. The green didn't pop at all. It's very subtle, but I'm cool with that. The other issue, obviously, was uh, the green label. It ended up missing, um, where is it, pages 3 and 14, but does not affect the story. Um... And so for me, yeah, I never, you know, I remember, per I remember getting this book um, from my at the time my LCS when we were when I was way young. Um, along with my brother, my other two buddies, we were collecting X Men. An X Men collection comes into the comic book store, and we just start trying to pick them off as much as we can. And the guy at the, that owned the comic book store at the time, it was in Fremont, California, Comic Zone. The guy behind the counter, Scott. Scott allowed us to put some of these books on hold, and. Uh, and he set some books aside for us because he, he knew that you know, X-Men was one of our favorites. So I, I can't recall what I paid for it way back when. Um, I, I could say like 10 bucks, 15 bucks tops because we didn't have much money uh, back then. And uh, But I do remember reading it. And so yeah, the story's complete. The things that are missing are the ad pages. But this is more sentimental than anything. So for it even to be at a five, uh, I'm really stoked. And then it was just a matter of getting uh, Joe Sinnott on there. So that's my X-Men issue, number 13, second appearance of the Juggernaut. I still need the first. <laughs> uh, this one, another book I was really stoked, and I didn't check my list. So where's my time at? Also, okay, I got a few more minutes. I better hustle up. This is going to be a part two because I'm slow. Uh, Fantastic Four, number 72. Uh, Joe Sinnott in that that blue 
that like turquoise or Sioux Storm blue, which I was sitting on the surfboard. And I'm showing these books because these ones are actually, um, I think like this was a blue label. And I, I don't remember the other, it was a blue label. I think it was a 80 or 75 uh, blue label. Or it could have been raw actually. I think it was, it wasn't even a blue label. Sorry, it was raw. It was raw and it was, it was given a grade of like a seven and a half raw. Um, the Fantastic Four right here. So for it to come back in 8.5, fantastic. I just love the cover. These books, all these were the books that I, I had to submit through uh, Desert Wind to get graded. But I actually waited in line and handed these books to Joe Sinnott to get signed. Just like my Larry Hamas. And just like the previous books I showed that I waited in line and got the autographs from the artist. And then I had to submit them to a Desert Wind. This one was a... Dang it, was it a blue label? No, these were all raw. They were never graded. But I think the grade on it was a six and a half or a seven actually. I think it was like a seven. And then I wasn't sure how it would come back, but it came back a seven and a half, really stoked. But I wasn't sure because of the, the color bleed through the, the purple on this right there, but still fantastic. Uh, Joe Sinnott in purple. Uh, the purple started to do a little little leak there. Actually, I think it it got smeared a little bit in the la in you know in the last name Sinnott. But the Joe and everything still, in for me it's it's fine. It's perfect. It's got character now. That's what it is. It's got character. So Silver Surfer number two, seven and a half. Really stoked. Uh, Silver Surfer number three. You can see how this. Uh, and this is what they call, or this is what we've been, what I've been calling. Um, it's the blue paint. These are paint pens again. That's why you know these are tricky. But the uh, the blue paint pen or the AG blue, as some folks may or may not like to call it. I take credit for that, I guess, for a pen I didn't create, just a color, because I am a fan of the blue. Most of my books were done in blue. But number three, uh, seven and a half, and I believe this was a CBCS. So I want to say it was a CBCS 70, so it jumped a half point. So really stoked with that. Yeah, and it, you know, going from a CBCS to a CGC. Um, again, I I waited in line, got to meet Sinnott, Joe Sinnott, not Sinnott, Sinnott. <laughs> Some people will correct me if I'm pronouncing it wrong. Got to autograph those and submit them through uh, CGC. Oh, man, this video is long. I got to cut it after this one. All right, Batman. 183, and I'll be back with a part two.